also embrace and look forward to the opportunity to examine EPA's efforts to determine whether there is a significant link between fracking and groundwater quality, and if so, what next future steps we need to take uh, to make sure that our drinking water is clean and safe, and uh, if this technology is uh, able to be done safely, uh, where and how is the best way to do that. As I've said before over and over in this committee, uh, I do support an all of the above approach to energy production, and I do believe that if we can make it safe, we should make it happen. However, uh, in any technology, if we cannot make it safe, we should try and uh, fix it to make it safe, and if not, uh, certainly not uh, expose uh, consumers and citizens uh, to any of the hazards that may exist in any project. Uh, the emerging natural gas boom obviously provides an exciting opportunity for our nation, not to mention California, to create jobs and diversify energy options for both consumers and industry over the next several years. That said, when it comes to fracking, I still believe we need to proceed with extreme caution. And I understand the concern of the chairman, uh, both uh, Chairman Lummis and Chairman Stewart, about the length of time it has taken. But I, I frankly, I don't think three years uh, is too long at this point for something that is so serious. And as I have said, and I know many of my colleagues are committed, uh, if we can make this technology safe, we are willing uh, to make it happen. But we do have concerns, especially in California, about seismic activity and uh, what uh, fracking could do with seismic activity. And with respect to the study in Wyoming, uh, I certainly share Chairman Lummis's concerns about uh, what happened with that EPA study. And what I'm interested in learning is whether that study uh, was something that was supposed to be limited and limited in scope only to uh, the concern of uh, groundwater affecting uh, a particular person or a particular group of individuals and rather that and whether that study should really uh, be projected uh, more broadly uh, as an EPA groundwater study. So I think there is legitimate debate about whether uh, the study that was done uh, should be used uh, or whether there is a more uh, broad comprehensive study taking place. But uh, I look forward to working with uh, both chairs uh, to, to see that. And we have to be careful that when we do extract this resource that we do it carefully without unintended serious consequences to either our health or environment. And while I know that the focus of this hearing uh, is mostly on the EPA and groundwater contamination, uh, I have brought up my concerns in the past about uh, what I think are direct links between seismic activity and fracking. And as I've said, it may be the case that perhaps California is not the best place to have hydraulic fracking and perhaps other states that don't have seismic concerns uh, if they can show that there will not be groundwater contamination, that would be the best place uh, to conduct fracking. It would be very short-sighted, though, to produce energy via fracking in California to only find that it would lead to uh, seismic activity uh, or further seismic activity. So I'm pleased that the EPA and other federal agencies, uh, along with many of the partners in your states, are taking these issues seriously. And I urge you to take the time you need to get the most accurate answers possible, even if some of them don't turn out to be what we want to hear. There's simply no place for politics when it comes to making sure that the water that our families rely upon is safe and that the homes that we live in are not put at further risk of a man-made disaster. And so I look forward to learning more on this issue. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time.